Okay, everybody, I'm going to be talking about size classes in iOS 8. This is a new thing that Apple came up with. Um, I'm also going to be talking a bit about constraints because I know that's something that not everyone is familiar with. So in iOS 8, in Xcode 6, when you make a new project and new view controllers and things, you always get this square view now by default. And obviously there are no square iPhones or iPads. The idea is that Apple wants everyone to make things that are that are fairly generic and can be mapped to different displays more easily. So they give you a view that is by default kind of not what you'd expect. But I'm going to show you a little bit how this works. Um, I'm going to start off by just dragging out a view. Uh, this is just a plain empty box. I'm going to give a color so we can see it. Um, let's make it blue. And I'm going to put this here and line it up along the corners. And I'm going to just create a basic set of, of constraints that will keep this in place no matter what size device and what kind of rotation we have. I'm just going to change that color a bit more, a little bit lighter. Okay. So right now, uh, this view is, it actually has, it, it has a fixed coordinate uh, location and size. If I bring up a preview, which I can do, um, let's go over here. So there's a preview feature here that lets you, lets you see what it will look like on different devices. Here's an iPhone. Let's bring up an iPad as well. And as you see, we just have a square. It's not doing anything smart at all right now. I can easily add some constraints to this. So I can say I want this thing to stick to the same relative distance from its top, bottom, left, and right. Add those constraints. And now that, that this blue square becomes a rectangle that fits whatever view we're looking at. This kind of basic constraint stuff that's been around for a while. <clears throat> now what's new is that they've added what they call size classes. Every device has, uh, has a predetermined size class. And the size classes are vertical and horizontal. They can either be regular size or compact size. So an, I, an iPad is regular size, no matter which way you turn it. The, it's, it's, it's wide enough that it's what they call a regular width, tall enough to call a regular height. The iPhone is a little bit different. The iPhone is, uh, if the iPhone is in portrait mode, it has a compact width and a regular height, I think. And if you rotate, rotate landscape, then it has compact height and compact width. So, um, and this is all stuff that is new for, for iOS 8. What they've, what they've done here is they've given us a way to, to edit these things. You can make constraints that, are, that apply to only some subset of these of these different size classes, as well as putting in objects in place that only, that only correspond to certain size classes. Um, I'm going to start off actually with, with some objects. Um, let's take a uh, UI button. I'm just going to drop a button in, in the middle of this whole thing here. Um, and I'm going to call this any. This is a button that will appear for any size, no matter what we're looking at. And as you see, it shows up here. Again, not in the right spot because that has not given any constraints. Let's add some constraints for this so that it maintains its, uh, no, we don't want that actually. We want uh, not either of those. There's different ways of doing this. I should do this inside a control drag out and I'll pick center horizontally and center vertically. That gives it constraints that make it go to the middle of its container, no matter what the view is. <clears throat> Now, so this button appears on any layout. Um, if I want to make a button that will, that will appear only in a compact layout, this control lets me choose different sort of sets of these things. So there are nine choices on here. The middle choice is for any width, any height. If I go over here, I can pick compact width and any height. Right, so let's do that. So I switch to this. Now I'm in a special sort of editing mode, and the this kind of bar at the bottom changes to blue to show me that I'm in kind of a a different thing to sort of highlight what's going on. So I'm in compact width. If I drag out another button and bring it up here and just drop it somewhere, I'll say this is this is uh, compact width. And I'll do the same kind of thing as before. I will just kind of center it and give it some constraints. <clears throat> I'll just say center uh, horizontally. And I will go, I'm just going to drag the other way and make a top constraint so it maintains the top space to its container. So now you see it appears in the iPhone, not on the iPad, because this, is, this object only appears when we have 
compact width. If I rotate this iPhone, it's still there because this still counts as compact width. And interestingly, they have more types. I can add in here an iPhone 5.5 inch device. Shows over here on the side. This has a compact width. If I rotate it, this one does not. So there's sort of a, there's sort of a limit. At some point, the iPhone 4 inch is considered compact width in landscape mode, and so is the, the 4.7 inch. The 5.5 inch is not. So they're, they're trying to move away from this idea of thinking of laying things out for iPhone or iPad. They want to think about widths and heights. <clears throat> And again, the same, same thing applies for, for any of these. We can, we can also make views that will only appear for a regular width. So let's uh, switch that, and I'll pull out another button here. Drop it there somewhere, and I'll make constraints for this, for the top, and say center horizontally. And I'm going to call, whoops, let's call this regular width. So now this button appears not for the iPhone, it does appear for the iPad, and it does appear for the iPhone 5.5 inch. So again, this, I think, what's that? Rotated. But rotated, not rotated. But, right, not, if, if it's not rotated, then it would not appear, so. There we go. So there's a certain sort of limit at which it sort of kicks into different, uh, different modes. Um, and the interesting thing is, again, you, you notice that when I rotate the iPhone five and a half inch, those things come and go. The compact width disappears, the regular width appears. So those, and this happens also when you're running. It's not just, not just in this kind of preview mode. This happens when you actually run on a, on a device or in a simulator. Um, and the way it works is that those objects are all allocated and, and initialized and exist throughout the, the lifetime of this view controller, but they're not actually present in the view, in the view hierarchy. They're actually automatically taken in and out of that view hierarchy when you when you rotate. And the same thing applies equally well for constraints. I don't need to go through the whole thing, but just like we set up objects and created and created constraints that are specific to those, you can have an object that exists for any layout, but has some constraints that only apply in certain situations. And this, this is actually a pretty powerful thing. And the thing that I have is sort of an open question that I don't know is. Um, if any such, if anyone has seen any such thing for, uh, for the web, I mean, I know there, there we talk about, we talk about different different layout strategies for views and things, but I think just this this kind of particular thing where, you have you have views, you have actual elements that not only just not only I just like so had their size reduced, but actually come and go. So like, if you would have the the corresponding thing on the web, it would be that you would have a, a wide web page. As you shrink it down, the elements actually are totally removed from the actual from from the object tree that makes up the web page, and held somewhere and can be put back in if, the, if it gets wide again. So CSS has the idea of um, media queries. Media queries. Okay. So this actually sounds a bit like fixed media queries, where Apple had decided what is regular and what is compact and what is wide or whatever. Hmm. Um, in CSS, you can define any like width or any other constraint. You can have constraints on like uh, the uh, DP, uh, DPI, mm -hmm. the, the display, stuff like that. But also, elements does not disappear from yeah, the DOM. Yeah, display. Uh, you said display to none, right? Yeah. Right. So they, they get yeah, hidden, but. but right. No, no, that's display hidden. Display none removes it from the DOM. Oh. It does. How, do, how can it come back in? How can. It's can it come back again? When you check the inspector, though. Really? Yeah. Yeah, sure. You can set display none as an inline style. Mm -hmm. from the JavaScript. Right. No. According to the CSS spec, display none removes it. Well, then, then the browser must keep a, a, like a separate DOM that is not displayed. Yeah. It's, I think it's still in the DOM, but um, for semantic purposes, it's supposed to be considered to be not there. So if you have a user agent that supports CSS and there's a display non element, like a screen reader or whatever, uh, if something is display non, then it shouldn't read it, even right. though it doesn't have any concept of visibility. So, so okay, it should seem to be gone. It's in the HTML file, but yeah. not in the DOM tree. I think, I think if you traverse the DOM, it, you, you will not come across it. No, you won't. But if you inspect 
the in Chrome, you might see it. So in okay. the HTML file, it's off. Like it's of course going to be there. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. Regardless of <coughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can still find them in JavaScript as well. Um, like even if it's display yeah. non, because yeah. you can display yes. non and then display block. Same thing in JavaScript. Right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But this reminds me of, a, of something that Magnus did on our client project this week, which was there was a list of images, and then when the screen was a certain size, it applied display non to the first and last one. So you went from having like three or four to one or two. Yeah. Which seems like a pretty cool way. Yeah, yeah because in a, in a big screen where we have a lot of um, horizontal space, we could show multiple images, but on a telephone, as they call it. Uh, <laughs> that wouldn't make sense. And it still would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense either to put them on a sort of Top of each other like a column because they're not relevant in the same way. They're no, like, just setting a mood, right? Exactly. So just rather showing one image with an right. right. There are website I hear websites I hear that remove stuff like data from the site uh, <laughs> when you enough. when you switch to a different uh, size. <laughs> so for example, the ThoughtBot website <laughs> removes the faces of people if you're on a mobile, which can be pretty. Uh, Confusing. Pretty confusing. Not what you expect. And not very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> but if you rotate your Android device, you get the list yes. of yes, the I do. Okay. Exactly. Like a big screen. Or your large <laughs> iPhone. As considered by Thoughtbot and please. So, <laughs> but on, in this case, you're adding callbacks to buttons. Is that like? Is there code? Is there a risk of code duplication if you're doing this? Um, there could be in the sense that. You, you might end up having outlets to buttons that, that actually have the same function that you only put in one layout, layout or another. And so like if you, and if you have no good way of making it work otherwise, you could do that. But what you can also do is you can, you can make one button that is in the any, like the, the button is defined in the any case. And then you use constraints that are different in different things to make it, to make it appear in different spots for different size classes. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing that right before you had to do a lot of that Completely manually, and you yeah. absolutely would have. You'd either have fixed sizes that you'd have hard coded, or you'd have buttons in different places and sort of animate between locations or something. So, so the reason why Apple decides which is compact and which is not is like the number of devices is known, and like and the number of like widths and heights is known. So right. I mean, it doesn't make sense to allow each one to decide. You can decide per view. Say like this view should always be. This size, like minimum, should be two hundred points, and max, like you can set max and min and all of that with auto layout. But Apple is just telling you, with compact, you are using some category of devices that are uh, beyond some some certain like uh, threshold, and that could be iPhones in landscape or iPads or whatever. Right. The only thing you need to know <coughs> is that that's like you have a certain amount of space for each one of these classes. I think what they do is they try to take a more general approach because before they had, programmatically you could ask, am I using the iPad idiom or not? It was just yeah. a Boolean. And that's all you knew. It was, like, it was sort of tell you if you're on an iPad or an iPhone. And they want to make it more generic than that. You can say, okay, I know I'm on a regular width device or a narrow or a compact width device. Mm -hmm. And same for height. So you can kind of determine that both, you can do things here and at runtime you can determine that to, to determine like the flow of your application and how the navigation should Right, and it makes a lot of sense now that they have like all these different devices. Right, because now there's like four different iPhone sizes, each yeah. with ro with two rotate two orientations. Yeah. So. So now that this is very possible, are there best practices that are coming out of this? Like, for example, would you create would you show buttons on the landscape that just don't have the same functionality in portrait? Um. Hard to say. You could, and I think people will find all sorts of different things that will, you know, do it different ways. Like so, by default, they ha they have their their things like the uh, the split view controller that gives you a, a thing on the left, a list of things on the left, and a contact view on the right. And that has kind of a default behavior where, in a uh, in a regular width, actually that's not even true. So it still has a notion of orientation also. So by default, on an iPad in landscape, you will see the navigation bar on the left, and in portrait, you will not. So that's still actually doing, that's, all, that's looking at both the orientation 
and the the width. I think it's related to regular though, because like on iPhone Plus, uh, it takes an iPad style for everything when you turn it sideways. Right. Yeah. So well, I think that's because yeah, the the, the six plus. When you turn it sideways, it gets the regular width. Yes, exactly. And so it goes, okay, this thing is regular width and landscape. So let's show the navigation bar. And that's that's also true. Like, but you can also you can also do you can actually force that now. So you can make that thing show the the left side list all the time if you want. Because it makes sense. Like uh, taking your phone and flipping it, flipping the orientation is actually sort of an interaction. So if you learn that the interaction to sort of display the menu is to flip the device over then it makes sense to not show the menu only depending on the width of the screen. Right. So, yeah. That's cool. So, awesome. that's it for me. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.